So the numbers are pretty staggering. One in 10 adults are thought to have type 2 diabetes and many don't know about it. I'm Dr. Khalid, a family doctor from the UK, and today I'll be sharing with you important information. Because those nighttime symptoms that you're brushing off as just poor sleep, well, it could be a serious warning from your body. So let's break down those symptoms one by one, why you might be getting them, and importantly, at the end, I'll explain what to do about it. So let's start with a patient's story and see if you can work out what's going on. I had a patient a few months ago, um, let's call him Tom. He um, had a busy life with work, young family and he came to me and he thought he had prostate problems. He said, doc, I know I'm a bit young, but I keep getting up four or five times a night to go for a pee. So I took a history, examined him and he was waking up a lot a night to pass urine. And that's not normal for his age group or any age group actually. And also in the history taking, I noticed that he was losing weight and I checked for diabetes amongst other things in the blood work and unfortunately his blood sugar levels came back very high. So why do people with type 2 diabetes pass more urine? Well the answer to that is when your blood sugar levels rises your kidneys work in overtime to try and filter that excess sugar out. So it's trying to kick that extra sugar molecules out. And so to think of it simply, water follows these sugar molecules and therefore you are peeing more to try and pee it out. And especially this can happen at night. We as doctors call it nocturia or basically peeing a lot at night. Now in the case of diabetes, this process is happening all of the time. But what may be actually noticeable is that people who are living really busy lives don't actually notice it because you might not notice these quick 20 second trips to the toilet. But at night time, it does become more problematic problematic because you're actually waking up and it's disturbing your sleep. So people may notice it as nighttime symptoms of waking up and passing urine, but it could be actually going on all of the time. Okay, now we're on to number two. Now, if you notice that you're drinking all the time, we've learned already that you're passing more urine, so you're weeing lots of water and sugar molecules out. Well, it's not surprising that your body will need more fluid going in. So excessive thirst or drinking lots of water can be a real important symptom of type 2 diabetes. And as the cycle continues, it becomes a bit of a vicious cycle because you're drinking more water, you're going to be needing to go to the toilet more, and you're going to be peeing more, and that can start to disrupt your day-to-day -day life. Okay, on to number three. Now let's talk about those odd sensations you might be getting in your legs because it could be down to diabetes. Now over time, high sugar levels can damage our nerves and that's called diabetic neuropathy or essentially nerve damage due to diabetes. It can present in a lot of different ways. It's not really specific, but it can be things like tingling, pins and needles, burning sensations, uh, numbing feelings in your feet. Um, there is also another category of like restless leg syndrome, which is also associated with diabetes, where people um, have an unusual urge to move their legs uh, when they get into bed at night. Now, again, let's look back at Tom's story here. Some of these symptoms may actually be going on during the day, um, but you, again, because you might be living a very busy life, not notice it until you're resting and trying to go to sleep and you're noticing those tingling sensations in your feet or legs. All right, another one is if you're noticing that you're hitting the bed earlier and it's not usual for you and you're feeling more tired in yourself, then consider getting a check for diabetes. The caveat to this is, again, Tiredness is probably one of those symptoms in medicine that has got an infinite long list of causes, but diabetes is actually one of them. And I also do ask my patients who I'm screening for diabetes specifically about tiredness because it can be a key symptom not to miss. And you might be thinking, Doc, well, why do people who have diabetes feel tired? Because, like, you've got all this sugar coursing through your blood and sugar creates energy. So what's the problem? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that because you see in type 2 diabetes, you do have high sugar levels in your blood, but there are a lot of pathology that's kind of happened before that. And, and the sugar being high is kind of like the end stage. And there's something called insulin resistance that happens where your body is not responding to a hormone called insulin. And insulin pushes sugar into your cells so that your cells can actually use it for energy. And if you think about the logic of it, if your body is not responding to insulin, so that process of pushing sugar molecules into your cells 
don't work, so the sugar molecules start to build up in your blood instead. And so it kind of wishes around your blood vessels, and that's how it's kind of doing its damage, because there are high levels of sugar where it really shouldn't be. Now, some diabetics may also have problems sleeping. Your blood sugar naturally changes during the day, so from when you're awake to when you've eaten to when you're sleeping. And those fluctuations for normal people should be absolutely fine, shouldn't cause you any issues. But for diabetics, sudden changes of sugar levels can cause them to wake up, feel anxious, have night sweats. Hint, hint, guys, if you're having night sweats, it's not the menopause. And sometimes you can get trouble falling asleep as well. So sleep disturbances in people with diabetes can sometimes be linked with the fluctuations of their sugar levels. Okay, on to the next one. Now, if you're having problems with blurred vision, then it is important to rule diabetes out, especially if you're getting this blurred vision in the evening or late night after you've had a big meal. And this could be because of high sugar levels that can make your eye lens swell and this can affect your vision. Diabetics can also get damage over long periods of time to their eyes. It's one of the key organs that we recommend all type 2 diabetics to get checked yearly. So that's your kidneys, your eyes um, and legs and feet, making sure you're not getting diabetic neuropathy, which we talked about earlier. Now, let's be real blunt on this one. If you're noticing that you're struggling to fall asleep because you have an itch around your genitals or groin, or you've noticed white discharge, then this could also be linked with diabetes because often diabetics are prone to infections of the skin. One type of infection that they're prone to is a thrush infection. In diabetes, those high levels of sugar can affect your immune system, so how well your immune system works, and that extra sugar can also create an environment where these infections can grow. So if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, I would say firstly, don't panic, and also don't ignore it. Make an appointment with your healthcare provider to make sure you get checked. Because for me, the early detection of diabetes and knowing these signs could literally save your life. Like I said at the start, type 2 diabetes is very common. And I would say a lot of people who have been diagnosed with diabetes um, have been showing signs for a while before they get the diagnosis. So it's important we don't ignore them. And, you know, the classic thing of ignorance is bliss is not true in this case get yourself tested and you can get on the right treatment. The outcomes of diabetes isn't the same as it was 50 years ago. Modern medicine has advanced to a stage where people can live normal lives with diabetes. Like my granddad, he's 84 and uh, he's been type 2 diabetic for God knows how many years. I think he's actually in his 30s when he got diagnosed with it, but he had really good control of it with his lifestyle factors and his diet. And again, it's one of the reasons why I'm so interested about diabetes lifestyle factors because we can really change the course of a disease just by what we do day to day. Now if you found this useful then click here because the next video is about skin signs of diabetes with example photographs. I'll see you on that video. Peace out.